And Dee and I are playing footsies down here now. It's freaking amazing. It's exciting. <laughs> Do you mind just saying your names and your roles just for the recorders, please? <laughs> D. Bradley Baker is Klaus on American Dad. Jeff Fisher as Jeff Fisher on American Dad. Gluten Morgan, everyone. Hello, what's <laughs> up? So exciting. <laughs> Today we're doing an audio play. It's the Adventures of Jeff and Klaus. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah, we team up in one of the episodes that's coming up, actually. Yes, it's super fun. That's a really good one. How does that work? Is it like a race to the bottom? Or... <laughs> <laughs> Always. Just no. pedal to the metal, <laughs> race to the bottom. For sure. <laughs> For like sure. to get a, a, the, the most refined strain of pop or something. Does it involve aliens this time? Well, Jeff's legs get mangled in one episode, and Traus, Klaus tries to uh, help him rehabilitate, shall we say. Well, wait, you get mangled, and then you believe that everyone dies in the family, and so you're grief-stricken. And so Klaus, Klaus offers to have grief sex with you. That's correct. And to help me get over the pain that I'm feeling yeah, of so the loss of our family. Yeah. We won't tell you how it, how it culminates. You'll have to tune in when, when the episode drops. <laughs> but it, it's very, very sexual. Yeah. Very, like, you know, a lot of innuendo. And, uh, yep, it's, you know, it's all about healing. In your end, though, not in my end. <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, needless to say, it's a show that it, the, the wonderful thing about this show is it just keeps stepping over lines and going further than ever before. And, and I'm, I'm genuinely, I'm, I'm genuine when I tell you that I, I find it still really fresh and funny and outlandish and raw and a really good show. I agree. I'm not I agree. just saying that because you're interviewing me here. I, I genuinely watch it because it makes me laugh, and I think it's I think they're really great. And week to week, you're just so surprised that it just keeps getting it going crazier and crazier and pushing the boundaries. And what's really interesting this last season and the season before, the relationships between the characters, we seem to be mixing it up a lot more, mm -hmm. and then doing a lot of stuff as the whole family together. There's episodes where we're all in it. And it's just it's so exciting. I find it to be like the dynamics really changing and, and it's becoming uh, a whole different thing. Yeah, the characters shift and it's, uh, uh, I, was, I was saying on the ride over here that I think Francine is my new favorite character. She's just got this oddly uh, dismissive uh, attitude towards the family that she loves that I find very funny. <laughs> She's just a, uh, a great mom and yet sometimes just says some of the most horrible things. As they all do, I guess, in a that's way. That's right. But, but in the end, they all just kind of come back together, which makes it something that's both familiar and heartwarming, I guess. <laughs> I was wondering, like, in terms of, like, do the characters, I mean, obviously the characters in the show are really sort of um, exaggerated, but do they ever remind you of your own family members at all? <laughs> right? Some way? Well, Steve reminds me of me. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I'm... I'm mortified to reveal that of all the characters on that show, by far, the one that I most relate to is Steve. Mm -hmm. Just this, this, I mean, he, I mean, it really just checks all the boxes, you know, like into science, frustrated with girls, likes ventriloquism, anything <laughs> nerdy. I mean, just all this stuff. It's like, you poor, you poor little boy, man. And that's that's who I relate to the most. And Haley reminds me of my wife in real life, really? which is really crazy. Yeah, because I'm a total disaster half the time, and my wife's dry and sarcastic and looks at me like, "What are you doing?" Half the time, it's like I'm annoying her, you know. And Rachel does that so well on our show, and I just sometimes watch it and I just go, "Oh my god, this is so too real for me." It's just so spot on sometimes, and I'm just like, "Oh." crazy it, so, <laughs> it is it is it's really surreal sometimes you know and Rach and I have this great relationship outside of the show and we love each other and it's just such a wonderful thing it, but we don't act that way you know we're, we're, it's totally different you know our relationship but she plays and it reminds me of my wife in, in a good way you know but it's like yeah she keeps me on track and from doing really stupid things sometimes and motivated and you know and it's like that's what Haley's doing on the show a lot of the times you know keeping me out of trouble and getting me straight and back on track and 
you know, figuring out what I'm dealing with to help me get through it. And so it's very interesting. So is it becoming a bit of a biopic then? Are you going to see like the adventures of Jeff Fisher as Jeff Fisher, but the real life stories maybe? <laughs> I mean, they have done that over the years, you know, for sure. You know, they used to call me, the writers would call me, you know, from the writer's room and be like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm at the real inn having a fish taco. And then that became the episode where I was down in Mexico <laughs> trying to find the guy who makes the best burrito on the planet and inject sour cream into each bean. So that's what used to happen. And they still kind of, I think, do that. It's crazy. But they take it way further than my original. Like, they just ask me what's happening. And then, oh, I'm at, I'm at a dead concert. And then that became the big, uh, uh, the fish the episode. Fish, the fish concert. The yeah. fish episode, you know, that's which is super fun. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> I didn't realize that. Did you get kidnapped by aliens and turned into a clone of yourself? I wish. <laughs> I wish. I would love to get kidnapped by an alien one day. I, I They're out there. Let's get a, Let's see it. I want to see them. The ghost of I, I want, that was I've always wanted that to happen because they, they had UFO sightings uh, around my hometown of Greeley, Colorado when I was a kid and I always wanted to like be driving by one of our cornfields out there and just see something hovering yes. over a field and it's like what what do you do do you keep driving or do you stop and check it out or what do you back then it's like close encounters the third time is the big thing it's like oh, yeah. I think I'm gonna go say hi and see what and now it's like mm, it's more like nope and it's yep. like I don't, I don't think I'm it's more of a nope scenario. Probably. Maybe not. So, Dean, what's the difference between doing this show where you, you can where we mostly focus on Klaus versus like the Bad Batch where you're doing all the voices? Well, it's a, it's a very different kind of ensemble, isn't it? Both are ensemble shows, both uh, Bad Batch and American Dad very much so, which I think makes them a much more interesting show. Um, but Bad Batch, <laughs> I've never, and I, I probably never will, have anything like that where I'm just talking to myself for the whole show. And that's more straight ahead dramatic, but um, but uh, they both shows, I think, thrive on having distinct characters. Uh, the trick with the Bad Batch is to keep them all distinct and to, so that there's a dynamic between all of them of what's happening, that there's not just this kind of sameness that washes it all out. With American Dad, it's all built in because all the, the characters are all in these different positions. And so it's this kind of, nice perpetual dynamic that keeps that show going. Um, but these days, uh, they're, both are shows that are recorded separately. Um, we, we do a table read together on American Dad, which is probably the most fun part of it. And uh, then they record us separately. And then we do pickups, and then they work all the magic. Both, both are shows that are very different in the final product from what the original uh, rendering uh, uh, from the from the table read or read through record is so it's um, we, we have a very limited view of that as a voice actor uh, like for today they, they got to at least send us a, a few episodes to view of the ones that are going to drop and the 15 that are going to drop I think it's 15 on starting on September 15th I think um, but usually it's like I can't or we can't remember what we did because yeah, we recorded very difficult. it a year ago, uh, or maybe more, and they've done all this finishing while we were out of the picture. From a tech, oh sorry, oh, no, sorry. oh thanks. From a technical point of view, how did you go about developing Klaus's voice and what it would sound like distinct from your own? And then how have both of your vocal performances evolved in 18 seasons? Well, uh, Klaus, uh, uh, I, I, I spent a year in Germany in college, and so I auditioned the character as Klaus, even though it was originally written in French because uh, I thought it would be funnier. And then ultimately I just kind of let the writing and how the other performers sound help, help me triangulate what the character needs to be, which is now different from what it used to be. Like Jeff was saying, the, 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 the show and the, and the roles, they, they ripen or they change as the seasons play out. Uh, Klaus started out just kind of sexy fish hitting on Cla uh, Francine all the time, but now he's more conniving, more frustrated, uh, and but and oddly more social. Like how he's got like boys, his, right. his gang, you know, down in Tampa or in Chicago or all these other places. So he's really he's really branched out and changed. I don't I don't I mean, and your character's gone through all kinds of uh, changes in over the seasons. Yeah, My God, absolutely. You know, um, it's it, yeah. So basically, you know, I'm playing myself, but. You know, I'm playing a, a guy who smokes way more weed than I could ever in my life. And, and so, you know, I just went with that, you know, and I have all these 
incredible, like, you know, growing up, all these famous stoners that I loved so much, whether it was Cheech and Chong or Sean Penn and Fast Times. And, you know, you don't, you just have to find your own way of that. And so I just go down to this rabbit hole where I just feel like, okay, you know, I've been there. Let's get, just take it down a little bit. And it, life is easy. And in my real life, I'm pretty stressed out and I'm really like a A type personality. Sometimes I'm always moving and this guy is way more chill and like everything's cool. And so you just keep that in mind. And yeah, I mean, now, you know, I started off as like, you know, I'm just kind of the boyfriend, then we get married and now, you know, it's like. And you get abducted. Yeah. And then you come back. And I have an alien brain now. And so we, there's so many things now that they can do with my character because am I really a whole human? Am I part alien? I mean, I am part alien, right? Because, and so it's like, you don't know what's happening. And so I think there's a lot to explore still. And then the Haley and I relationship has been getting stronger and interesting and you know we try to have a threesome with the weekend and you know or you know <laughs> so it's like all kinds of crazy things so it, i do find it's evolved in a really beautiful way and the family dynamic i think has really become just yeah. more meshed together and they and, and they and they'll go far with it that's because it, it, it seems like a fairly standard um uh, family sitcom that seems fairly grounded in reality uh, but we've got, like, there's one episode coming up that's called Gernot and Strudel, which is about a, a child, a German ch children's show that Klaus watched when he was a kid, where things went wrong during a particular episode that really messed him up. And, and so he, he has Dr. Weitzman, a character in our show, named after Matt, our show, our showrunner, uh, put all the family in, in the bodies of these puppets that are from this childhood show from his childhood. And, and, and it's dark. It's very dark and bizarre, and you can go really far in these weird ways with a cartoon. Uh, and that's why I, was, I, I brought it up, is because it, 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 at times it's like, oh, they're just humans in a human story, and it's fairly straight ahead. But then they, they go all of these bizarre <laughs> places. They've, 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 they've got the most bizarre Christmas episode that this show has ever done, and I'm, that's saying something. Yes. And that's coming up for Christmas time. Yeah, and we just recorded, can we talk about the, the Scooby-Doo? Yeah, I think you so. Yeah, we did a, we did a, we all become characters from the Scooby show. Amazing. And, <laughs> yeah, I'm shaggy, and it's just hilarious, and it's incredible, and, it, and it's spot on, like, we go down that road, and, and, you know, the van is the mystery van, and, you know, it's a blast. So we have some really exciting things. I think they're really pushing the boundaries of even it's always been out there and I just sometimes I just go wow this is incredible who thinks of this this is brilliant yeah that's cool the beauty of the format right, I gotta of the show love. Okay. sorry thank you so much you guys thank you we're thank having you. so we're much fun we're blabbing we're on, on and on where sometimes you do on the story lines and then sometimes they just do like the weirdest crap like apocalyptic stuff and it just ends in the next week it's all back that's yeah. right yeah that is really fun there's a fearlessness to yeah. that kind of creative insanity that is still very much alive with the show that makes it as good i think at least as good if not better than it's ever been in my opinion i'm 100 percent with that yep absolutely yeah for sure